Today, the great clownfish experiment has begun. I'm gonna give you a frag tank update and we're going to frag some weeping willow leather corals for the giveaway. Let's go. What is up, coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Lama Coral YouTube channel. I think this clownfish breeding series is gonna be fun. We just kind of have to wait for the clownfish to do their thing. But if you want to be notified whenever I upload new videos to that series, go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. Turn on all notifications so you know whenever I upload new content. Switched it up on you, said content, not videos. New desk, new camera, things are new in 2021. Trying some new stuff, like I said, I was going to do in my last video of 2020. So I'm excited about this is, uh, Butcher block. And if you ever wanted a cheap, but like sturdy desk, super easy. This is actually a countertop from Home Depot. It's real birch and then uh, got four legs from Ikea and boom, desk. It'll be a good workstation for whenever we frag stuff like we will be doing later in this video. But first I wanted to talk about the clownfish. In the last video, I told you that my clownfish have laid eggs. I did get a couple of comments on what morph they are. I bought these as a grade A and grade B Da Vinci. Uh, one of them was Mocha, I believe, but I don't really see that Mocha in them. So it's possible that when they do breed and have a clutch that some of those may have that Mocha in them We'll have to see when that happens. I don't really know how long they've been laying eggs. This is just the first time that I've noticed, but now that it's happened, I kind of want to facilitate it and try and rear the fry. I think like a lot of reefers, when I first got into this and I saw that clownfish were easily bred, I went down that rabbit hole and I was like, I want to do this. I want to rear these clownfish fry and have a bunch of clownfish and maybe sell them or give them out or whatever the case may be. I just thought it'd be really cool to see the fry all the way through to juvenile and got into it and was immediately turned off by the amount of work that it takes to raise them from larval stage all the way up through that juvenile stage. And really it's those first like 11 to 20 days where you've got to deal with rotifers. Like a lot of things in this hobby, people who breed marine fish are very passionate about what they do. To contrast, I have never done this before. So I'm gonna need your help, especially if you've had success breeding clownfish and raising those uh, baby fish, those fry up through. Uh, that would be fantastic if you commented below just to give me a little bit of advice as we go through here. I do know that I have to set up some more tanks. I have a 20 gallon long that I can use. I also have a five gallon rimless tank that I can use. So I've thought ahead that far and I know that I'm gonna need to be able to culture rotifers at some point. So uh, any advice that you have, please let me know in the comment section below. So in doing the research, I've noticed, and you probably have as well, that whenever people breed clownfish, there's always a clay pot involved or some sort of clay tile. For whatever reason, clownfish love that type of a surface that they can clean and lay their eggs on. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go ahead and use a four inch clay pot. Thankfully, I have a spot cleared on the frag rack over by where they hang out in the toadstool. The weeping willow is usually what they call home when it's open, but I'm hoping they'll eventually become interested and they'll lay the eggs inside. This also makes for easy removal whenever we got to do that. You might be wondering why I'm not moving them into a separate tank for this spawning and breeding to occur. And I'm not opposed to moving them eventually, but you know, I feel like they're probably a little bit comfortable with the situation that they're in. And you know, it's kind of, kind of weird moving into a new situation and being comfortable enough to you know do the thing so that's the update on the clownfish at this point there's not much we can do at this point but wait i know potentially increasing the temperature can help feeding them multiple times a day can help but again I'm new at this, I've never done this, and if you have, leave some tips down in the comment section below. That would be awesome. I wanted to give a quick update on the algae situation in the frag tank. It's crazy how well Wedgie the sea hare has cleared out that green hair algae. I don't really wanna let him go, so I keep on trying to find algae in places and uh, make sure that he has something to eat for the night because he's nocturnal, he usually comes out overnight, and then I come back 
uh, the next day and the tank is all clean. So I'm hoping to give him more algae as we go on. I don't want him to starve, obviously. And if we get to the point where there's just not enough algae, we'll take him back to the LFS or I'll see if anybody in our local group needs the help of a giant sea hare. I also treated myself to some Acros and Millies from Reef Lounge. They just recently had a sale, $25 a frag or whatever. So I had some extra money for Christmas and I was like, you know what? I haven't bought coral in a long time. So I'm gonna treat myself to some SPS, which is also something I've never done is just willingly purchase a whole bunch of SPS, but it's all doing well. And I cannot wait to see what colors pop from these acros. For now, let's grab the frag of weeping willow that I have in the lagoon tank. We'll go ahead and slice that up. Tomorrow. All right, so we got the toadstool out of the lagoon. I've got some iodine that I use whenever I cut leathers. I got my uh, frag plugs ready to go. I only have these discs left, so I hope that does okay. It doesn't have the stem to put the rubber band on. And I've got my toadstool here. I think what a lot of growers have found out is that toadstools, once they get to a certain size, they actually slow down in growth. So like the mother colony of my weeping willow, it grows pretty slow. It really hasn't grown too much in the last year or so. And this guy right here, like one of these little juvenile frags, they grow so much faster. So I've actually fragged this probably two or three times and it's grown back to this you know, this disc that you see right here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take off the crown and we're gonna make, I don't know, maybe it looks like we could probably do four frags out of this and one of these will be for the giveaway. I always like to use iodine whenever I'm cutting leather. So just put a quick drop of that into the, into the uh, water, swirl that around a little bit. And then we're basically just gonna slice in and go around the crown. There's one, maybe two out of that one. So it's gonna look kind of funny when we're all done with it, but it'll grow back pretty quickly. I can definitely do two frags out of this. Let's go ahead and cut that right down the middle. These do pretty well when they're small. There's some other toadstools that I've, I've dealt with before that don't do very well when they're small, but these guys will be just fine. Now we just have to mount them on the discs with a rubber band. And what I like to do is just kind of lightly put these on, maybe one time wrap around the disc. I just like to barely tuck it under there. So it'll end up looking something like that. So we'll let these heal up, we'll let them attach to the frag plug, and then we'll send them off to new homes. One of these is earmarked for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway. And I do have a couple more frags here that uh, we might have to figure out what to do with. And I think the best way for you to know what I'm going to do with them is to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. So you know when I do decide what to do with them, you'll be here for that, so. That's a tease. And just a little bit of housekeeping. Peter and Jeremy are the hosts of Reef News Network and they took a month off to kind of recharge the batteries this year. They handed it off to some of us in the admin team. So this is kind of a one-off episode that we had some fun with. I got my buddy Tyler, you know him as Inland underscore Reef. He came over, we recorded with Tiger Boy H2O on Instagram. If you haven't seen some of his macro algae tanks, they are works of Art. It is beautiful. So if you've ever been macro curious, you got to check out this episode 148 of the Reef News Network. If you haven't subscribed to that podcast, it's always a fun time. Also, Scott Crow and the crew at OSA are going to be sending me a box of coral very, very soon. We talked about doing this in December and then the mail thing happened and people were losing packages in the mail and coral and live animals and things like that. We just didn't want to deal with that. So uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be getting a box of coral from Ocean State Aquatics, which I'm really excited about. I know Chris Kaz, I know he's got some gems up in that frag farm. Open the treasure chest, boy. Let me see what you got. So I oiled this table because that's what it said to do with like, and I have oil all over my hands. I just feel oily. I don't know why I just feel comfortable behind a desk. Maybe someday I'll be a newscaster, TV reporter. Anyways, um, stay safe and I will see you next week.